How you doing, YouTube? Matt Mess of Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. Tossing down some new school Hardies, because that's what I do in the form of Thomas Hardy Ale. It's their golden edition, 50th anniversary, Thomas Hardy Ale. Um, yeah, this comes courtesy of my boy Chuck. Thank you very much, Chuck. Um, for those that don't know, Chuck is the shit. He is awesome. Um, he was actually uh, did a couple of the first, the first, and a couple of the first beer reviews I ever posted. He's in there, so if you want to go check out me being super awkward and him being Chuck, you can go check those out. But um, yeah, um, kind of got I went I did not get Chucky into beer but uh was there during the beginning of Chucky's beer journey I guess you would say and um turned him on to Hardy's because that's what I dug back in the day and I still do and and um he uh he came up and visited uh for what was it Memorial Day and and he brought some beers and this is one of them and I'm kind of excited to give it a whirl. He actually brought up the base and or the normal version, I guess to say the non-anniversary version, and uh, the newer barrel aged version. There are not going to be reviews of that. Those were drank and enjoyed. But I figured I'd do this one. It's because I felt like doing a Hardee's. Uh, it's a bit of a, a day for me. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm not going to read what's on the front of this because it's super script, and I'm going to butcher it because I can't really read it because I'm old. But we'll start in the back here. It says, first produced in 1968 to commemorate the, fir, uh, the renowned English writer Thomas Hardy's ale is a limited edition barley wine ale, numbered and vintage, dated to be stored, stored for years, even for tw over 25. The bottle conditioning ale matures in flavor like fine wines. To discover how to store and taste it at its best, visit thomashardyale.com. 30% alcohol by volume. And they go over here over the special editions. Uh, the reason this is a special edition, it's 50th anniversary, because, as they say on the side here, Thomas Hardy's Ale Special Editions, 1968. First edition. It was a port barrel age, they believe. I have not had that one. I know people who own bottles, but I have not had it. 1983, Royal Thomas Hardy's Ales to celebrate a visit of Duke of Kent. I've had in 1983. Um, uh, 1987, 150th anniversary to mark 150 years of brewing for the Eldridge Pope family. I've had that one. Uh, silver anniversary to commemorate 25 years. Uh, actually, I have had the rest of these, actually. 2000, um, the silver anniversary, 1993. 2008, Thomas Hardy Yale's 40 years, last vintage produced by all Hanlon's. By far and away, the most drink, drunk, drank version I've had. I've had so many 2008s because it was the easiest one to find, especially when it was kind of going out of production in 2008. 2014 uh, was their preview edition, not for sale, when it came back. I didn't have that one, but 2015, I think, or 16, when they actually went to market production, I kind of uh, kind of hounded them, and they sent me off some. And then you have this 2018 edition. Um, so yeah, let's crack into this. I love the bottles on these. As you can see, I mean, look at that neck. Look at how beautiful. It's not just straight down. It actually has a beautiful curve to it. It's one of the prettier bottles. And as you can see, it's it's they're styling it after the old stuff. Actually, that's a, that's a new one. Oh, they're not. See, I, I'm a liar. I'm a liar. I thought they were doing it after the old bottles. Here's one of your old Hardys. I thought the old ones had this soft, bulbous ring in it. It doesn't. This is a, what, 94. But you can see this has more of a straight neck to it. For some reason, I thought it had that little soft curve to it, but yeah, what are you going to do? <sighs> Memory's not as sharp as it used to be. Not a big hiss on this sucker. Um, like I said, this is, is the 2018 vintage. I don't know how old it is, being that this is uh, June, the end of June. It's almost July of 2019, so minimum six months on this, hopefully longer. Um, so let's see what the sucker has. Beautiful, beautiful bottle. I mean, from the way they do it, the, the company that brought this back, which is Interbrew, not Inter, well, Interbrow, I believe it was, but not to be confused with the Interbrow from, uh, from AB and Bev, uh, something like that. I'm butchering all that. They brought it back. It was basically, I believe it was an Italian importer, kind of bought the recipe and then went back and has been brewing it meantime since like 1994. Anyway, you can watch my original re-release kind of review of Hardy's and get all the good information from there. But, I mean, she looks the part of Hardy's age-wise. More times than not, it's going to look way darker than this beer. But as a fresh one goes, it already has that subtle little haze kind of going on for it. Um, more times than not, when they're newer, they have a, a pretty decent 
relatively decent cl uh, uh, clarity to them. This definitely looks the part of like an iced tea kind of color. So she has those English barley wine vibes, a little bit of soft murk to her, that nice rich orange with a nice brown combination of color. So she looks the part. Let's see what it knows. Oh, that smells so good. It smells so good. Listen, in the grand scheme of things, you know, in a perfect world, Hardee's are gonna be five years plus, if not longer, age. That's my wheelhouse. I really don't wanna start drinking them till they're at least five, six, seven, eight years old. But this one smells pretty good because more times than not, what you get when they're fresh is just caramel. Caramel, water, sharp sweetness, all that stuff. This one's exhibiting that kind of raisin eddy, caramel, sugar eddy vibe that is what I covet in a Hardy's Ale. Sure, it's still a bit fresh. Sure, it's still a little bit kind of evaporative alcohol ethanol thing going on in there, but it does have that nice kind of soft, 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 really soft, kind of uh, <laughs> like sugar daddy, Dayton figgy thing going on. It just, it's not getting to raisinets, but you can smell it getting to the raisinette level. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is off sugar daddy. Uh, heaps of dates and figs. There is a little bit of soft tea tanning vibe in there. Nice rich sweetness, but not overly sweet. Let's dive in. Cheers. Mmm. That's delicious. That's fucking delicious. Man, I'm gonna tell you what. It's bitter, which is really unique. I don't remember Hardy's ever being this bitter. But it's got this big, huge tannic bittering thing, but it kind of works for me. I, I, I assume it's just throwing all those hops at the beer as a preservative, as a longevity thing, as the kind of a, a long term balancing act, if you will. But even drinking the newer ones fresh, and from my kind of memory of having Hardy's fresh, um, when it was actually being produced pre-2008. I don't remember it being this bittering, but it kind of works for me. You get that rich caramel notes, those date and figgy vibes are there in spades. A really nice soft creamy mouthfeel. I think it's only gonna get way better with time. I mean, this beer is pretty much, everything's gonna get better with time. Um, but way, I mean, you're talking at maximum, this beer is one year old. Maximum, year and a half old maximum. They released it on January 1st, 2018. So for a year and a half hardy, it's probably one of the better ones I've ever had, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know if there's any kind of special hoodoo they put into this beer. It doesn't say anything on here. As far as any kind of special bits and pieces to it. And, and the verbiage, the words that are on the front of this bottle mimic the 2017 one to a T. It is, you know, 1.3% bigger in ABV. You just notice in that now, this one over here is 11.7, this is 13. But I don't think there's anything else different. In it. Yeah, ingredients, water, barley malt, cane sugar, hops, and yeast. And the same thing over here, which is, you know, traditional when it comes to the Thomas Hardy Ale. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. With that added bonus of that bitterness, which is really cool. I mean, listen, I'm not independently wealthy, but if it was, I would buy cases of this and sell it for decades. And um, I'm going to get a couple of these. I'm going to have to track some down. Um, we don't really see these in my area. Um, like I said, my buddy Chucky gave me this one, but this is something definitely worth tracking down, at least for myself and anybody else who is a English barley wine head. I'm letting it age and how expressive this one is this early, being that it's you know a 2018 bottle and this is being June 2019, and seeing how rich and decadent this is right now, while at the same time retaining that bitterness, this is going to be one of the more funner versions to kind of let's see how she tracks over time. But yeah. Just a, a nice, rich mouthfeel. It's not super dense, not super thick, but it has this nice density to it with that nice, rich kind of caramel, a little bit of sugar daddy with that combination of dates and figs and then uh, have that pomp of that tannic kind of tea-like bitterness at the end. It's a fantastic beer. And honestly, one of the better relatively fresh or hearties I've had in quite some time. Absolutely fantastic beer. And one of my favorites of all time. Listen, I've talked about 
you know, my favorite beers and, you know, kind of um, uh, Desert Island beers and stuff like that. And Hardy's been on there 99 times out of 100. Uh, so, you know, I kind of go into, into this with a little bit of kind of preconceived notion. But even with that, which actually is, I think, a bit of detriment to the beer because I go into it expecting it to be great and sometimes it just doesn't live up to that. This actually exceeds my expectations for what I assumed it would be at the age it is. So take that for what it's worth. Yeah, let's cut this off. Uh, is it one of the better barley wines? Amer uh, English barley wines, non-aged, sure, year or so, but non-aged English barley wines. I've had it as of late, absolutely. Value and availability. Uh, I believe my buddy Chucky paid like 10 bucks for this, so 10 bucks a bottle. Well, it kind of sucks. I remember buying these for less than 100 bucks a case. Um, I remember buying a 15-year-old vintage case not too long ago for 300 bucks. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, distribution wise, again, take that for what it's worth and, uh, leave you with, if you like what, what you like this, if you like English barley wine, if you like Thomas Hardy, if you like JW Lee's old stock, all those beers, this will do you proper. Age it. Age it is what I say, but definitely drink a couple every couple of years. That's, that's the whole reasoning behind this beer. Pick up a case, which would be 12 bottles. I believe of these drink one. Wait a year, drink one. Wait a year, drink one, and start drinking one every two years. That would be my suggestion. And once you get towards the end, it's going to be a really good journey. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little Hardee's right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.